Coach, thank you much. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Dallas Cowboys and the Los Angeles Rams. Here we go, the final week of the NFL season. Week 17 is underway. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. before he could get out of the backfield. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line, but I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. The tackle there by Mark Barron. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. from the gun. He's going to go for a big play downfield. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here is away. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Rams are going offense here for the first and 10. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. On first down, it's gone. Room to run past midfield. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. From the 50, it's gone. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop right. him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Jalen Smith, the Notre Dame man, in on the tackle. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, 
hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Third and long. It's gone. He can run for it, and he will. He opted to go with a scramble, gets two yards, and now it's fourth. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Here's the Dallas offense now, heading back out onto the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter games turn into bigger runs later. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. A first down carry by Elliott. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, Creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. Prescott off play action. Eluding the pressure right, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. The best quarterbacks that ever played the game all wanted to blend in with their teammates and be one of the guys. But sometimes you got to take modesty and put it aside. You're the franchise quarterback, the face of the team, and the guy that leads them to victory. You have to get down and protect yourself and not take hits like that. Now Prescott, flush to his right. And he's got it to Hearns. And he brings this up to the 46. Good enough for the first. Dak finding the former Jag Hearns for the Dallas first down. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. Now a carry. It's C.J. Anderson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It's a loss of a yard there. And now second down. Second down throw for Prescott. A dump off to Elliott. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see. Yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A gain of four on the play. And just like that, it's third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end. But running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Prescott now from the 50. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked. Instead, it's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. 
And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And the magnitude of this game, everybody knows it. The fans, obviously, the players and coaches, there's just with them a palpable buzz right now. They know they control their own destiny. Win and you're in. And I think every player wants that. I think every coach wants that. I haven't been in an organization yet that wants to be in a game where they have to rely on other teams to get them to, to, to their goals. In this situation, it's very cut and dry. Win and you're in the playoffs. That's their mission. That's their challenge. And you know they've chosen to accept it. And what they told us is this has been the most focused week of practice we've had all year. You wouldn't expect any different. Yeah, and you know, at the beginning of the season, you have multiple goals. They just have one now. Win the game. So first and 10 now from the 30. Gurley again here on first down. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. Working the middle here, that's complete to Everett, the tight end. A really nice gain of 25 yards. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you got a heck of a tight end candidate. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Back live now to begin the second quarter with Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon. It's the Rams with a football to get us going. They've got it second and six to start things out. up 12 on the play there and they move the chains boy he does it at a high level doesn't he because when i watch him i think of his vision straight ahead peripheral also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open i think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They'll try the air now with Gall. Steps away to his left. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Partner as a quarterback, sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head, it's time to go. Tuck it and get all you can. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. They have a first and 10 at the 13-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. 
Here's Goff now on second down. Flushed out right. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. So he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And as they say, that's a no-no. Got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. From the gun, here's Gaul, escaping the pressure right. Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Anthony Brown, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Unfortunately for him, if last week was any indication, we knew a pick was coming at some point. Last week, it was interception after interception, and here we go again. We actually quit counting last week <laughs> at a certain point because I thought I was going to run out of fingers, all right, because I'm not all that skilled as a mathematician. But you're right. It felt like a matter of time, and you've got to think the guys on defense, they couldn't wait for this opportunity after what they saw on tape. Really shouldn't be a surprise. It's going to be hard to move people in this situation. You know they're going to bring the pressure defensively. So I remember playing in these spots, and my coaches always say, don't be afraid to try and create a safety, too. And it's intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by the Pro Bowler, Marcus Peters. Well, it's not every day you see a defense pick the ball off and already have six points without moving. And on that play, no distance to run. Similar play, although it didn't happen right in the end zone, but you remember that Washington-Los Angeles Super Bowl where what, Joe Theismann tried to throw one? the screen the pass? Number? I can't remember the number, but he tried to throw the screen pass, and Jeff Squire got it with no one around and just waltzed in and pretty much broke their backs. That's a similar play, although this one didn't have to run at all. Ah, here we go. Stats guy Johnny on the spot. Super Bowl 18, 38 to 9. It was in Tampa. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start the drive with Elliott. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Go 46, 46. Good. Second down, Prescott. Eluding the pressure right. And he goes out right around the 39. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. They go play action here on first down. Airing it out for Hearns. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped in his tracks at about the three. And credit the tackle to Taco. Taco Charlton with a stop. It's a loss of two, now third down. All right, let's go ahead and detail this situation here. Third and long coming up, back near your own goal line. I would be very hesitant about throwing the football in this situation. 
Maybe just run, run up the middle. Yeah, I think that that might be the spot for them. You got to try and find some space for your punter because you don't want him backed up where he has to alter what he does. Hey, hey, hey. Right, Throwing on third, gone. And he'll find Everett there, complete. And able to get a little more breathing room out to the five-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. Had one tell me once, you know, we were having a tough patch. This too shall pass, this too shall pass. And it finally kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. Prescott now on second down. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. On third down, it's Prescott. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked up by Mikel Roby Coleman. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. After the interception, here's Gong. Flush to his right. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Give him six on the play, and it's a second down. But it's tough to be a defender in today's NFL because there's so many things to account for in today's passing game, including the back sneaking out of the backfield. Not quite as bad as a turkey bowl where you have that center eligible stuff, but still a lot of guys to account for. To throw on second down is gone. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A good pick up there, a 22. On first down, it's Gurley. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley with touchdown number 12 on the year. And the Rams add on to their lead. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. Four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zip. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. LaMarcus Joyner with a pick. And a terrific return as he takes this thing all the way down near the 20-yard line. So a minute 51 to go in this first half of play. We're back to the City of Angels after this timeout. Now a play fake here on first down. He'll buy some time right. And this one's incomplete. Gerald Everett is tied in, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. 
A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Now it's gone. It's caught left side by Courts. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or... Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. And Zerline's kick is good. And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. Still a little bit of time left here in the second quarter, but they do get three before the half and expand that lead. And they have to be happy about that, and we haven't met a team yet that doesn't put an emphasis on trying to get points on the board in the last two minutes of a the half. They'll be real excited to have those up on the board. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Final play of the half, Prescott. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with a pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we've come upon halftime here in week 17, as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. The final two quarters of the NFL regular season are upon us as the second half of Week 17 is underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. And the Rams now coming out on the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Sean Lee, the pro bowler, there for the tackle. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Here we go. On second down, here's Goff. Throw complete right side to Cooks. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Super. Goff on first down. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And they'll get 
this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Give him 30 yards there. Well, Park, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Goff now to throw. He's going to fire this thing deep right sideline. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Even without a ton of pressure in his face, it just shows how difficult it is to pick apart his own defense. Those guys are sitting back, and they're not playing receivers as much as they're playing the eyes of the quarterback and when he delivers the ball. Line of scrimmage, again the 37 as they line up second and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 33, a pickup of about four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. The Rams on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This will be third and six. A shotgun snap for goal. Mike, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Demarcus Lawrence in there to drop him, and his great season continues. 13 sacks for him now on the year. And I tell you what, he got it from 58. That had lots of leg behind it. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Mm -hmm. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Prescott on first down. On the left side, Gallup's got it. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out, and by a few inches, that'll be a first down. Solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. They go to Elliott again. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. 46. 46. On first and 10, Prescott. It's caught right side of turns. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That throw good for four. It's second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. He's airing it out for Williams. And now here is another interception. Picked off at the 11. And he'll bring this one back to the 29. He's had quite the interception run. He had two last week, another one here. Remember, he's not a DB, he's a linebacker. But how many of those linebackers started as DBs and pumped themselves up into being linebackers? So the ball skills are the same, right? The coverage skills and responsibilities are the same, and he has paying it off in a big, big way. Golf will lead the Rams up here, first and 10, just shy of the 30. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. He finds an opening past the 40. And he'll get this all the way up to the 42-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Okay. 
go, fellas. Here we go. Right back to him on first down. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. Eight yards on the ground there, and now they're looking at a third and two. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. From the 50, it's gone. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. First target, first catch, and a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. On the handoff, it's Gurley. There he goes inside the 30 and down to the 27-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him, that full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Four down, four down. On the run, this is Presley. And he's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. The Rams on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This is third and four. Gone. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Well contained there defensively. The screen gets only a yard at its fourth. And Zerline's kick is good. Back now in Los Angeles. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Now the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Prescott. That one complete, Alia. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see 
the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. First down, Prescott. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 10 more there and another first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. A second down throw for Prescott. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Prescott now perfect since the second half started. 7 of 7. It's first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. Looking to throw. Prescott. Flushed out right. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. Prescott on third and goal. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by John Johnson. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used a calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot, they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it. And sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, pulled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And he stopped immediately there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. The Rams on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll run again with Presley. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And brought down, but not before reaching the 25. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. 
Decent start to the drive, but let's face it, they need a lot of things to go right in a short amount of time down three scores. Yeah, they're going to run their two-minute offense here in this game, but this is for future games. Can they get better and be ready for the next time, hopefully with a chance to win? Now he'll let it go deep right side. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And my goodness, another interception. John Johnson with the INT. And the return here will go to the 31-yard line. Gosh, you add up last week and this week now. That's nine interceptions in this two-game stretch, and we're not done here. It's almost as like if they can't even believe their eyes. Or maybe, partner, is the confidence level in him so high that they believe he'll get out of it and make plays for them to win a game. Well, they said they believe in him. That's being tested right here. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Only a yard on the pickup, and now they've got a third down and eight.29-yard line. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will make the lead now 26. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They're down big here late. I, I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Prescott now on second down. He's going to let it fly. He's got a man complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. Give him 30 yards there. Nice game there, partner. But you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Prescott, and down he goes on the pressure from the Rams' defense. Mark Barron coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Prescott from the gun. He finds his target, Terrence Williams. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. On third down, it's Prescott. And now here is another interception. Picked off by Mark Barron. Thought they had something going there to break that goose egg here in the second half, but to no avail. Hope was alive until that interception. What a terrific play, taking the ball away after it looked like they were starting a drive. And now that shutout still standing. You know that's something those defensive guys hold a lot of pride on, too. No doubt about it. They are excited about where they are in this game.
Well, the storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. And what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too? So for Los Angeles, they will indeed finish over 500 at 9 and 7. And that is maybe not exactly what they were hoping for, but a better than average season nonetheless. Meanwhile, for the Cowboys, it's loss number five for them on the year. And as division champs, they will host a playoff game next week in the wild card round. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.